So we watched Little Women right after we did Little Women, mm-hmm. and I lot cried, not this little is, cried. Yeah, lot. I lot cried. I lot cried. Um, the Greta Gerwig yeah, one, I was say. like, because there's like fifteen. I know, but um, Four I major ones. I looked up some of the um scenes from the Winona Ryder one, and it just doesn't look half as good as this one. I think a lot of people have nostalgia for it. Well, I guess. Well, I was born in '94, but it's not as like it feels to me. It feels a lot more static. Mm-hmm. And I don't buy Winona Ryder as Joe, all right? Just shoot me. She's not Joe. If anything, she's like Beth. Always at the cusp of, like, death. <laughs> but, like... Her, her, what is it? Her life is a really dark room. But, um, Kirsten Dunst as Amy, really good. Really good. But then good. they recast Yeah, well, because pers- like, she actually genuinely she's is, a like, child. little. Yeah. I know. Whereas, like, there's pros and cons to that, I think. Because having Florence Pugh the whole way through was amazing. But think, you did have to kind of suspend your disbelief that this 24-year-old woman is playing an 11-year-old child. But, like, most people, like, people mm. that watch it, they don't exactly know that she's meant to be 12 at that point. I Until suppose. she says that she's 20 and you see that seven years ago, then you're like, oh my god, what? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I guess it comes off less bratty than Kirsten Dunn's. Well, I watched a couple of video essays on it. And Ooh, it's, tell it's, me. And, it's and link me later, because <laughs> I'm obsessed. Literally just Google Little Women. And they said that it was because Greta Gerwig chose to showcase them first as women mm. before the little women. Yeah. <laughs> so we're welcome back to illiteracy. Welcome back, indeed. What what week is this? Fifth, six, six. six. <gasps> That's crazy. Six. I can't believe week. we've done this six times. Yeah, and Oscars happened. Ooh, yeah. And we're we're Florence Pugh stands. We love Amy. We love Amy so much. She deserved better. Amy March. Can't believe Greta Gerwig got us to like Amy March. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, reading the book, I didn't not like Amy March. The way I did, I think, the first time I watched the... 94 one? 94 one, yeah. But Kristen Dunst is a perfect brat. She really is. Mm. Oh my god, she did so well. She's a good little mm-hmm. actor. Little actor. Someone, someone saw her in an interview with the vampires, the tiny vampire brat. And they're and like, like, Amy. <laughs> she can be a tiny human brat. <laughs> does, does she have to be a vampire per se? I like the ending of this one, too, mm-hmm. very much. And I like that they made the professor cute and young and not 40 and oh, German yeah, and old. Thank God. And he was like... Like, because I, I watched the scene with him and Winona Ryder, and he mm-hmm. was like, I was waiting for you to give me a chance to stay. And I was like, Winona, that is your father. <laughs> That's your German dad. What are you doing? Oh, that's creepy. And I just like that in this one. You Like, spoilers for Little Women 2019. You as a viewer get to decide what Joe's ultimate ending yeah. actually is. Mm-hmm. I know what my decision is. <laughs> she Bless doesn't get married? You. Thank you. Well, there's two different filters for the... um. Mm-hmm. The now That's and the true. childhood and the ending where it's all like nice and oh it's, it's in with the, the childhood it's like the childhood story, filter story and the vibe. real cold blue filter is when she's watching her book get made. Mm. So that's uh, my take on that. Smart. Did you get that me, from a video Greta. essay? I got it from that and from my heart. <laughs> <laughs> that's me heart. <laughs> Alright. Um, speaking women. of little oh. women, actually. More little women. My sister invited what? me to be her bridesmaid today. Or is that That's speaking nice. of little women? Because it's sisters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's a little woman. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to be a, You're her sister. As if you weren't going to be a yeah, bridesmaid. She hadn't asked me. What if she didn't have a bridesmaid? What if she was just going to backflip by herself down That'd be the awesome. aisle? I would, oh. She could do that. She was like state, state champion. Okay, in, this podcast is not in, about your <laughs> sister's achievements. All right, enough. All right, what are we doing this week? We're doing Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Oh, and I didn't actually look up <laughs> the date it was released, which I usually have. Did you do anything for this report? No. Okay. The only thing I know about Great Expectations is there's someone named Pip. Oh, you do know. Well, you said Pip's it. Name. Oh, I did. And then you said Timothy would be a great Pip. Oh, yeah, he would actually. Yeah, see? Well, you might not like that. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it was published, the novel was published in its full... Glory in 1861. Was that the same year as Little Women? Why Might have been. Why don't you look that Anyway, up? it was also, like Little Women, it was also serialized originally. He wrote it in a newspaper and he was paid per word. So a lot of people like to complain that he's super wordy. 
Well, you know, someone's got to bring home the bacon. Exactly. Right. And it's Charlie. It's Charlie's. Charlie's bringing, bringing it. So, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's a novel. You don't know? Okay. Yeah. Um, serialized, so 1860 to 1861. Preceded by A Tale of Two Cities, followed by Our Mutual Friend, which I don't think I've heard of. Okay, so, Great Expectations. Very, very famous, famous old-timey Dickens book. The only Dickens I know is, um, see the one that did, uh... Scrooge. Yeah, Scrooge Christmas Carol? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, did you ever watch the Mickey Mouse version of that? And, um, mm-hmm. Ebenezer and the, the Scrooge is, you know, um, the old duck. Oh, Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't think I have. Coins. It's just, oh, I've seen the pool of coins. You know, we have Disney Plus. That's what we should watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite, um, version of that is the Muppet Christmas Carol. Cause it's, the songs are. Oh, this one doesn't have songs. It's just bopping. lessons. Mm. <laughs> just lessons. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, this this one um, also has little orphans pressing their faces up against glass. Oh. Kind of. So we, so we open on a graveyard. Oh. When our protagonist is a little boy of seven years old. Is this Pip? Yes. He's also our narrator, and his full name is Philip Pirrip. Philip Pirrip. Pirrip Pirrip. Pirrip Pirrip Pirrip. Pirrip He just couldn't say his name, so he's like, yeah, Pip. That's literally it. Like, we learned that when he was a kid, he couldn't pronounce either of his names, and so he said he called himself Pip. Um, he's at the graves of his parents and brothers and sisters, so he's oh. an orphan, as you would Brothers expect. and sisters? How does everyone just die? There's like six of them or something. Yeah, just like died in childbirth or in, in childhood in, dysentery or in poverty. smallpox, tetanus. <laughs> <laughs> like a cold. Like yeah. Cold. Like a small cut that like tears your arm off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's something living in it. No, that's, that's more. That's not England. England, they more just died of like an ennui, probably. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I am sad. And now I am dead. <laughs> if only it were that easy. They just sighed so hard, they like suffocated themselves. <laughs> they sighed all the oxygen out of their body. <laughs> like the longest sigh. Death is the lo- the ultimate sigh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they've all shuffled off their mortal coil. Okay. Um, good. And he's being raised by his only living sibling, his older sister, who's an adult who's married to the blacksmith Joe Gargery. So we never like learn her name, but they often call her Mrs. Joe or Mrs. Gargery. Oh, I thought she'd um, be a bigger part in this because it's well. his parent, but okay. Um, so she's apparently raised him by hand and by hand is in quotation marks because... What does that mean? Did she like breastfeed him? No. Oh, um, Dickens uses the phrase raised by hand a lot and he, he, he does it like ironically because it basically signifies that she beat him. <laughs> oh. So he like he uses like raised by hand more like raised by the cane that she called Tickler. <laughs> raised by hand and Dickens is like oh, Yeah literally, literally he's literally every time he has like a phrase that he repeats which is quite a lot you can like Imagine him, like, winking at the page as he's writing it, like, race by like, hand. If he's, like, reading it to somebody, he's like, oh, get it. <laughs> yeah. They're like, Charles, yes. Yeah, like, pushing their shoulder. Yeah. But, um, that's normal back then, though. Wasn't that just the norm? He, he's critical of it. Oh, good. He is critical of it. So he's sitting in front of his family's graves when this super scary man dressed in rags oh, no. springs out from behind a gravestone and grabs him and oh lifts him God. off his feet. I told you this was going to be goth. Oh, also, I see that you didn't wear black like I instructed you. Neither you didn't wear black No, You're wearing an Archer Vice shirt. <laughs> and all, I, all I'm doing is staring at Pam and her damn coconut. <laughs> it's good, doesn't it? Oh, my, what's my favorite one here? Oh, I, I love um, the butler setting the cigar on fire with the money. Oh my god, no, remember when I graduated and all I wanted was for my grad picture to be me in my robes and like lighting a joint of like my <laughs> diploma. Oh, diploma? Yeah. But I couldn't do that because it was 43 degrees and I almost got in a fight on the tram. <laughs> you did, and the girl... <laughs> so Sam got in a fight with an old man. <laughs> well, he and elbowed his... me in the face. <laughs> yeah, um, and his daughter was like, calm down, and you were like, I will not calm First down. First of all, I was in an auditorium for like four hours, and it was yeah, like no, it was 50 terrible. degrees in there. And, then, and he was not respecting your personal space, but this girl, like his daughter, grabs my arm mm-hmm. and looks at me like, she didn't say anything, but, but like, she was giving me like your control friend. your friend, and I'm like, no. And I was like, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know her. <laughs> I was just ha- yeah, I you was, were gonna throw down. I was off the. I was uh, <laughs> hands on sight. Me and that old man just take it. <laughs> <laughs> he was very confused. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but his daughter was ready to fight you. No, actually, she was saying some shit. I remember. I was yeah, getting yeah. riled up. <laughs> yeah, it was just one of those days. But anyway, I didn't get that photo. Um. Oh yeah, lifts him off off his feet, and he like turns him upside down. What <laughs> so, is he robbing him? Well, just wait. 
Pip notices he has an iron on his leg, like a shackle. Oh. Um, and the man commands him to go and bring him some food and a file to no. saw his leg iron off. <laughs> like, who are you? No. <laughs> If you were Pip, this book would be over so quickly. I know. <laughs> like, he'd leave me and he, I'm like, And you'd be down. like, put me down. He'd be like, oh gosh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> Why would I get you this thing? And this guy's daughter, like, grabs your arm and is like. <laughs> no, grabs the um, graves of my family. He's like, like, I am control. Control. <laughs> control your only living child. <laughs> now he, he, she goes to my sister who yeah. raised me by hand, Charles. <laughs> Charlie. Charlie. Chuck. Ch- Chuck, Chuck Diggins. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I'll be trying to with Charles Diggins just so I could call Chuck him that. Duck. And he'd be like, Sam, stop. <laughs> and he'd grab my arm and say, control your friend. <laughs> and he'd be like, did you not know I am published author? They pay uh, me by the word, every single word. <laughs> <laughs> He frightens Pip with the threat of another young gentleman who is hidden somewhere in the marshes, who apparently eats young boys and is way more scary than um, this already very scary dude. So this is what like scares Pip into being like, oh God, I have to prove it. Where is he? (laughs) Show Um, me the cannibal man and I'll run and get your file. (laughs) So Pip is scared into obedience. He thinks this other young gentleman is watching him Um, and he runs back home to the blacksmith's cottage where he lives. So Joe the blacksmith is a really lovely guy. Oh, good for him. And honestly, more of a peer of Pip's than any kind of, like, father figure. Like, he's a little bit of a father figure, but he's also kind of, like, a simple man child who... He's, oh, he's oh, just, he's like, Pip's um, friend. He's, you know? uh, he's uh, Kristoff and Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, more childish than that, even. But, yeah, anyway. He's Olaf. <laughs> <laughs> he's Sven? He's Olaf. Um... <laughs> <laughs> he is a snowman and he works in a forge <laughs> and his wife beats his own brother her own brother her own brother it's weird because she it sounds like she's like 40 and he's like 7 but maybe she's like 20s I guess yeah back then when you were 20 that is 40 yeah because people die at like yeah. 35 unless you're super rich mm, yeah so Pip's sister beats and abuses him too <laughs> it's like enough I need some help and he just takes it oh, what's wrong with her maybe he should be like hey you don't want to eat me you want to eat this other lady who I don't know and I'm not connected to. <laughs> so I think Joe does love her. He calls her like a fine figure of a woman. And like, I don't know, it's weird and complicated. But anyway, she, yeah, she has a cane called Tickler that she beats Pip with. And oh my God. It's all very horrible. and Tickler? You know, yeah. Dickens is, a lot of Dickens stuff is about like, stop abusing children. <laughs> but I'll show you by this. Yeah. Um, oh my God, Milo. You know, literally everything, like all of our company. A Christmas Carol. Like Oliver and Company. This is all like, I live in Victorian England. He just called Oliver Twist Oliver <laughs> and Company. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I really do love that movie though. Mm. That is a top movie. <laughs> Chuck Duck's like, what? <laughs> Chuck Duck. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Christmas Eve, as it often is in Charles Dickens novels. And Pip smuggles a piece of buttered bread he was given for dinner down his pants. Hey, excuse me. Um, Christmas Eve. When was the whole shaking him for change? Thing that was happening? literally just earlier. He was in the graveyard. Oh, he was he, on Christmas. Eve. It was Christmas Eve. Yeah, All right. It, it's, I was it's, like, okay, maybe I should have said it's still Christmas Eve. No, you should have just began with I it's began Christmas with it Eve. Christmas. I'm sorry. I'm not Chuck Duck. I'm not <laughs> great at storytelling. Although I'm pretty sure he didn't tell me it was tell me. He didn't tell me. <laughs> tell me personally that it was Christmas Eve until you get back to the blacks. He's just like Sandy. It's Cottage. Christmas Eve. Right? <laughs> You do know that, right? So he has to, like, stir the pudding all evening with his bread down his pants that he's, like, sweating on (laughs) in fear. The next morning, he sneaks down to the pantry before anyone is up, and he also grabs some brandy, and he refills the bottle with water, like, watering it down. And a pork pie. It's, like, high up on the shelf for, like, later. Um, Then he sneaks into Joe's smithy, and he nicks a file, and he heads back out to the marshes. He can just not go back. He, he thinks he's, the man's going to eat him up. He's like seven years old. They don't know. He does, does, oh, is he like, he'll follow you? Yeah. Oh, sure. So soon enough, he runs across a man in rags and a li- leg iron. But wait, this is a completely different man. <gasps> what? I know. What? He tries to grab Pip, but Pip gets away and finds the original scary man in a leg iron. And he's like pacing around and he's cold and wet and hungry. Everyone's <clears> got <throat> leg irons. And so Pip hands over the food. Um, Pip mentions he's seen the young gentleman. You know, the, yeah, the, the quote unquote cannibal. Yeah. Um, and at first, um, the the man in the leg iron doesn't know what he's talking about. But when Pip describes the man that he ran into before, this guy gets furious 
and he starts like sawing away at his leg iron with the file. Oh my God. And Pip hightails it home. So Christmas dinner is terrifying. Why? Um, he keeps waiting for his theft to be discovered. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's like, any moment now, she's gonna go get the pie, and it's not gonna be there. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever done that. I'm like not stealing a whole pie. Stealing. Stealing. I don't know if you've ever stealing a whole pie, but <laughs> um. No, but I, I've, I've, like, eaten my sister's candy cane before and gotten in trouble for it and lied about it and been really terrified. Um, I think this, one of the moments I've been scared of was um, when I was around uh, maybe seven. Maybe I was Pip's age. Maybe I was Pip. Was <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I was Pip. Maybe it was me. Mm-hmm. Um, I accidentally broke a glass and no one was home. So I went over to my cousin's house next door and I was just stressing about it all day. <laughs> just like a seven-year-old having, like, a panic well. attack. Yeah. No, no, I cleaned it up. Oh, I'm, okay, yeah. Not an animal. Anyway... And then when my parents finally got home, I was trying to, like, um, maneuver the conversation. And I was like... Like, work up the courage. I was like, this is, this is it. I remember this because it's probably, like, my first panic attack that I've ever had. <laughs> oh, no. And I was just like, hey, mom, uh, do you remember the first time you ever uh, broke, like, a plate or something? <laughs> like, <okay. laughs> just, like, during dinner, just, like, cutting some beans. I'm like... <laughs> and my mom was like, oh, yeah. Probably when I was, like, six or seven, I was washing the dishes and I broke one. I was like, were you, uh... Parents and man. And like, <laughs> oh my god, you're like a lawyer. And then they were like, no, they just like helped me clean it up and check the power right. I was like, oh yeah. So um, speaking of that, um, I uh, accidentally <laughs> just reminded me. Actually, I'm like, I'm like funny you should bring it up. <laughs> I broke a glass earlier today, and I was just like ready to be like Aww. beamed into another di- dimension. And then they were just like. Oh no, is everything okay? Did you hurt yourself? What happened? And then I was just like, all day I have been sweating. Like this. <laughs> it must have been a relief though. Yeah, I was just like, right. I was like, oh, right, it was an accident. <laughs> well, no such relief for Pip. Oh no, <laughs> she discovered the pie. Um, his uncle Pumplechuk is there. What? <laughs> That's his name. Last name, I I hope. <laughs> um, he's a well-to-do local grain merchant, and um, and another guy's there called Mister Wopsle, who's a church clerk. Um, and the family. only reason I yeah, the only reason I mention him is because he like becomes important in like a single plot point later, and I'm just, so I have to. But anyway, at one point, Pumblechook is offered brandy. Uh oh. And he spits it out immediately because he can taste tar. So what? Pip accidentally put instead of regular water into the brandy to like water, water it down. It was tar water. What is tar, why does he have tar water? So I think it's like a medicine that his sister gives him, like a punishment. But I'm not. Like, She's sure. like, have some tar, you bad have boy. Have some tar water. Wash your mouth out with tar. It could also be the 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 husband. He just has yeah. I'm, I tar for it. his. No, I don't. Welding. I don't think it's welding. I don't know. They get weld. What is he doing? Blacksmithing. Yeah. Hammering. Does he need tar water to... No, um... I, I don't think so. All right, that's just tar water. I think water. it's her It's thing. fine. It's 1800s. From what I recall. It's, it's 1800s. It's tar everywhere. It's orphans everywhere. So he drinks the gross He brandy. spits it out and he's like, tar water, and Pip thinks he's going to get found out. But... And he f- almost freaks out. But a couple police officers rap on the door. <laughs> so many people come into this little house. Um, actually, they might be redcoats. I think they might be like soldiery type dudes but but one description i was reading said they were police they burst into the house holding a pair of handcuffs oh no are they gonna pips out of his mind he thinks they're here for him but they actually just want joe to fix the handcuffs (laughs) no he's just like i'm getting arrested (laughs) and i'm seven like his little hands that happened back then though they like put children to death like literally like his hands wouldn't even fit in the cuffs they just be loose (laughs) He did be holding them. He'd be holding the cup. He's like, let me out. <laughs> they, all they'd have to do to keep him there is just tell him, like, someone's watching him. <laughs> like, just, Who eats little boys. There might be a cannibal. He's mm. like, you got me. I will do whatever you need me to do. <laughs> so they inform the party that they're looking for a pair of convicts who've escaped the prison hulks <gasps> anchored just offshore. That's Ooh. where our leg iron men come in. Pip, Joe, and Wopsle head <laughs> out to help the soldiers look for the convicts. Sure. Yeah. Um, and they find them locked in a vicious fight together. Oh. Are they fighting for that piece of, like, pant bread? Pant bread. <laughs> when Pip's convict is questioned, Pip. he actually protects Pip. Oh. By claiming that he stole the food and file himself. And, like, later they're talking... Is that the old man? That one? Or the the younger one? 
older and young. They're about the same age. Oh, this is this, oh no, is one of them's older. One, the, the, the older, the first guy, the scary guy, yeah. and then the, the younger scary him? guy. One of them has a hat. We'll call him Hat Guy. So the first guy didn't have a hat. The second guy had a okay. hat. Okay, who's protecting him? Hat or no hat? No hat. Okay. The first guy. First. Guy. His convict is like the first guy, the one he yeah. got food for. Yeah. Okay. Second convict is like might be a cannibal. <laughs> yeah, it might maybe. <laughs> I mean, he has a hat. <laughs> okay, he has a hat. Hatable. <laughs> Had- Hatable, the can. <laughs> the oh. possible cannibal. Hatable Lecter. Not as terrifying as that. Mm. If that was his name. Yeah. Did you ever have a crush on Anthony Hopkins in Silence of the Lambs? <laughs> no, what? Did you? Yes. I watched it at a very early age for I'm some reason. My worried. My parents never were strict, but not really like. Pe- like strict with what I watched yeah. like it was until it was too late and they're like what are you doing I'm like I don't know the first M rated movie I ever saw was Team America and I was oh way too young <laughs> I was way too young <laughs> isn't that like, Muppets yeah. sex puppet sex and uh, political wait who was stuff? watching that I was I know, but why did you put the pillow? I think we, because we could like hire anything we wanted from the video store. And, they and didn't I was know like, what it was. oh, cool, puppets. <laughs> and they didn't know what it was. And I was like 10 or something. So I hired this out. And like the clerk obviously didn't give a fuck. But yeah, so that's that's, that's hilarious. one of the. Well, mine's one of my Sounds of moments. the Lambs. And yeah. I remember, I was always scared with the, um, when she goes in the, um, the storage area yeah, and there's like that the pickled head. head and yeah, I'm like, I'm was, out. That was scary. So I walked out for like five minutes. And I was I like 20 and I was scared when I saw it. Oh, I was 10 and I was fine. <laughs> <laughs> and you're braver than me. Congratulations. Um, so yeah, so Pip's convict actually protects Pip by saying that he stole the food on the file himself. Good for him. Yep. There you go. Um, and they actually like speculate later. I'm gonna wonder how he got in. <laughs> and Pip's like sweating. <laughs> 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 I'm so young and so afraid. <laughs> um, so Joe carries Pip home because he's tired. Oh, and it was cute. Um, they finish their Christmas dinner, and Pip goes to bed feeling guilty he didn't tell Joe the truth. You Don't. <laughs> what about the pie? Has no one noticed? Oh, well, they think the convict sold the yeah, pie. Yeah, yeah. So Pip lives with his guilty secret for a couple of years. Uh oh. He's learning how to read and write a bit at Mr. Wopsle's school. Yay! Um, where he befriends a girl called Biddy, oh. who's the granddaughter of the teacher. Um, Biddy. yeah, Biddy. Biddy. <laughs> one afternoon, Pip shows Joe a letter he wrote to Joe, and the way Joe reacts to it makes him realize that Joe can't read. Oh. Which he's like, no. Oh. Um, at the mo- at that moment, Mrs. Joe and Publisher burst in and tell Pip they've got some great news for him. Wait, who burst in? Um, Mrs. Joe, so his sister. Oh, his mean sister, yeah. And Pumblechook, the kind of Oh, the fun uncle. name guy, yeah. Miss Havisham has requested that Pumblechook find her boy to come and play at her manor, which is named Savas House. Oh. Miss now Miss Havisham is a rich, mysterious spinster who lives nearby in like complete seclusion. She's a real mystery. So she's Enya. Yes. No. I don't know. Maybe. I hope not. Let's just say that. Oh, no. Okay. Um, Mrs. Joe and Pumblechook reckon that she might settle Pip with some kind of reward for his services. So they're like... Mm. What services? Oh, I mean, like playing? I don't know. It's, it is a bit service? weird. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going. Um, but this is the 1800s. So we just send children to... They're dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they scrub him raw and dress him up in a little suit and scrub send him over. Scrub him raw. <laughs> this is so dirty. Look at all the tar water. <laughs> The gate is locked. Oh no. And in a little bit, a girl comes to open it for him. She's about his age and very, very beautiful. Uh oh. She's the most beautiful child you can picture. Yeah, it's. It's, um. Or in his Kristen maid. Dunst. Yeah. No, it's Rena's maid. Oh from no, <laughs> The CGI like, the baby. CGI <laughs> the most beautiful child you've ever laid eyes on. So creepy. <laughs> and the little boy's like, You're beautiful. And she's like, I know. And then she um, eats him. And then she eats. It's a really short story. Yeah. All right, who wants dinner? <laughs> <laughs> She's also really rude and sends Pumblechook away immediately without any ceremony. She's like, well, you're not invited, so go away. Nice. But she leads Pip into the house, taking up a single candlestick. Uh-oh. The house is really fancy, but it's kept weirdly dark, like it's been shut up. Oh, my God, she's a vampire. <laughs> they finally reach Miss Havisham's room. And oh God. so you see her for the first time. She's oh a thin, ghostly, pale old woman. Oh. Uh. I don't think she's that old. I think she, she just she's looks like older than somewhere. she is. I think she's like maybe, yeah, maybe 35, maybe 40, but like, or like she, she's gone. Shit has she, aged her, you know. So. What happened to her? Do we well, find out? Is that the story? You sure do. Oh, um, thank God. I was curious. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, she's sitting in front of her mirror. Her hair is white 
and he notices that she's wearing a dress that must have been white once, but is now discolored and yellowing. Ew. He also notices that she's only wearing one shoe, and that all the clocks in the room have been stopped at 20 minutes to nine. Oh my god, what? I know, it's so creepy. What's up with this room, dude? Um, the little girl leaves, and Miss Havisham tells Pip to start playing, but he's way too freaked out, and he politely tells her that he's, like, way too freaked out. He's like, um, <laughs> perhaps I may counter I am too freaked out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you so much, madam, but I, I must uh, apologize greatly for yeah, I mean, being... Quite freaked out. <laughs> Quite. Uh, chuck a duck, you got him. <laughs> chuck a duck. He's so, Miss Havisham orders him to call the little girl, whose name is Estella. Sure, yeah. And he has to, like, yell it down the door. Du- bleh, and he has to yell it down the dark hallways till the little girl comes back. Miss um, Havisham orders them to play cards together. They do, and Estella makes fun of Pip's rough hands and shitty clothes. <laughs> and the fact that he calls knaves jacks. <laughs> He's like, this boy calls the knaves jacks. How coarse. And he's like, no, oh, man. I'm just doing my best. Oh my god, I love her. <laughs> Miss Havisham, meanwhile, is watching them kind of like morbidly intent. Oh. When Pip finally leaves the house, he cries. Because, you know, he's been bullied. <laughs> when he gets... <laughs> you know how you do... You know, after you play a game of cards, like, <laughs> getting reamed and, like, getting watched by an old ghost in a creepy old room, and then you cry. <laughs> you know how you do? Yeah, as you do. Um, when he gets home, he's either afraid or embarrassed to tell them what really happened, but they press him for the details, so he invents this crazy story where they, like, watched a dog fight and ate cake and stuff. <laughs> but he feels guilty for lying to Joe. Um, Joe obviously immediately believed everything that he said. Oh, Joe, the simple idiot. <laughs> so he admits to the truth later on, and Joe is amazed to hear that Pip lied. He just can't believe it. <laughs> He's like, you lied? <laughs> what? No, surely not. Pip, um, you he... can do that? <laughs> What's, what is a lie? <laughs> it's like, you know, when my sister asks if you've done this, and you say no, so she doesn't hurt you. And he's like, What? <laughs> I can... You can say no. <laughs> oh, that got depressing really fast. I know, right? Um, this awful woman. I hope she gets um. Oh, you just wait till what happens to her. Oh, she gets Ooh. baked into a pie. Here we go. <laughs> and fed to... It's Tiny really Todd. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, this is all happening at the same time. <laughs> yeah, in the same neighborhood. 1800s. <laughs> should watch Sweeney Todd. We should. I like Sweeney Todd. Yeah, me too. It's Guilty really... pleasure. I know, I love mm. it. Like, he feels you, Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right so that was he lied. on death side <laughs> <laughs> so he lied and yeah, joe yeah, was like holy guacamole okay so but joe tells pip that maybe he shouldn't trouble himself with such fancy people and try to live an honest life you know yeah. be which, like don't get involved with those yeah. ne'er-do-wells um which pip immediately forgets oh pip <laughs> you're gonna say that a lot <laughs> oh, no, oh, Pip! <laughs> Just right out. <laughs> so, Pip wants to improve himself, so he goes to Biddy for extra lessons. I think he just feels like, like, man, they think I'm nothing, but I want to be something. <laughs> <laughs> I want to meet something. So he's like, myself. yeah, exactly. He's like, I'll prove him wrong. One night, he finds Joe at the pub. Oh, no. And, oh, no, never mind. Oh, uh, what? It's just this bit that, like, doesn't come to anything in a super boring, and I don't know why I included though? it. Basically, he sees a strange man there stirring his drink with, like, a file. And Pip recognizes it as the one he stole from Joe's smithy, okay. and he's freaked out. But the man gives him two pounds to take home, which he gives to his sister to put into safekeeping. It's like, so the convict got a job at the pub. Well, no, it's, it's not the convict. It's oh. some other guy. But he's... Why does he have the nail file? Exactly. Like, what's going on? Maybe he tra- the convict traded it for a drink. Beer caps. Anyway. So that doesn't come to anything? That was Not just really, a- no. Oh, what? I thought it was part of the music. I feel yeah. like I'm playing am um, Because he's, like, writing it in a series, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So I think it does get mentioned later, but it's, like, not Honestly, satisfying. it feels like I'm playing, like, a PC game in the ooze. And, like, I'm like going through... Like a point-and-click room. adventure game? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, the Oregon Trail or something? That would be great. But A great click, point-and-click version of this. And you, like, go into Miss Havisham's room, and she's there, like, pixelated. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought was happening. Mm. Anyway, on Pip's next visit to Miss Havisham, oh, he's no, he introduced... Oh, yeah, he goes lots of times. Um, he is introduced to a series of her relatives. Turns out it's her birthday. Oh. <laughs> All her relations seem to be trying to get in her good books, like insincerely sympathizing with her suffering. Yeah, because she's rich, no. Um, and not cutting each other, yeah. So you know she's super rich. Snives out. <laughs> On the stairs, Pip encounters a tall, imposing man who, <laughs> I was going to say, had like John Malkovich or Christoph Waltz energy, but that's not quite right. But Ooh. then I figured out whose energy he actually has. Charles Dance. Who's Charles Dance again? Tyrion. No, not Tyrion. Tywin Lannister. Oh. Yeah. Like imposing. Yeah. Well, he could be hot. 
but he's scary. That's he's why he's hot because he's intense, scary. Yeah. Come on, as if you would have. He, so he's like answer. this, uh, yeah. Right, you know when he was. Of course, like, of course. He was like skinning that stuff. I? I was like, skin me. <laughs> um. So he's like this terrifying, unsmiling thundercloud of I'm a dude. Into, love it. They have a brief, uncomfortable interaction that I barely remember, but he's important, so remember him. Pitt plays cards with Estella again. Is it just one game? Are they playing like Go Fish? I think or they something? play a couple. No, I think they probably play like Whist or something old. Like Go, f- like mm. like. Poker. He calls names, Jacks. On his way out in the yard, a young pale boy confronts him. Do we find out what Stella's relationship to that old woman is? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we. See I'm not it. sure if I mention it outright here, but yeah, she, okay. she's adopted by the old by the woman. old lady. Okay. Yeah. On his way out in it's the a yard, ghost boy. Yeah. <laughs> a young pale boy confronts him. No, not ghostly, just like Ed Sheeran, you know, like pale in that way. Ed Sheeran's in this too, and Game of Thrones. <laughs> no. No, this is like Ron Weasley, but like when he was like. 11 year old philosopher's stone Ron Weasley Aww, vibes. with all the chicken in his mouth <laughs> so he's about the same age as Pip but he's dressed like a gentleman oh. and he very casually invites Pip to fight oh what <laughs> yeah to have a fight with him which Pip does and what? gives the pale boy a thrashing which the boy takes very well he's like <laughs> good show <laughs> <laughs> like bully um is no one supervising these small no ones? okay and they're just because he's on his way to the gate and all the adults are in the house so they're just like in the ground why was that small boy there just waiting for a fight um he i think he's one of the relations well, was one of the relations his son if that makes sense <sighs> well he is i know that he is yeah so he reflects as he goes home that he still feels like shit because he knows deep down that she looks down on him still and he wishes he was smarter and more refined. And I think it's partly to impress her, but it's also partly to prove her wrong about him. I was wondering why I was more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> right, the breeze. On his next visit. Stop going there, Pip. He has to. He's required. Are they paying him? Well, you know, let me come to it. Okay. Anyway, he's worried that he'll get in trouble for the fight, but no one mentions it. He pushes Miss Havisham around in a wheelchair. He plays cards with Estella, and this goes on for the next few months. He's got it into his head, partly from his sister and uncle, that she's planning to, like, raise him up, sort of in standing. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of patronize him, I guess. What he doesn't notice so much is Miss Havisham encouraging Estella to bully and torment him. Oh, God. One day he hears her whisper to Estella, break their hearts. Oh, God. But he's just like, huh. <laughs> like, like, he doesn't even, like, read into it at all. He's just like, hoes. Huh. Oh, my God. He doesn't make any connections there. Oh, Pip. <laughs> just there it is again. Oh, Pip. Just different tones of oh, Pip. It's like, oh, Pip. <laughs> but now it's like, oh, Pip. <laughs> um, he, so, nevertheless, he starts feeling ashamed not only of himself, but of Joe. He tries to educate Joe, not out of any real good intention, but more to make him presentable and less common. And so yeah. he doesn't feel embarrassed by him, you know? Oh, Joe. Finally, one day at Satis House, Ms. Havisham reveals that she's going to pay for Pip to be apprenticed to Joe as a blacksmith. Okay. So that, like, sort out the paperwork and doing all of that, um, costs about 25 pounds. And I guess that's for, like, his gear as well, starting out. While this is still quite generous, Pip's devastated. He had his heart set on becoming a gentleman. Yeah. Joe comes to Satis House to settle the paperwork with Ms. Havisham, and he's super out of place and uncomfortable. And Estella laughs at him, at his coarse manners and clothes. <laughs> He's so rude. <laughs> Poor guy. He does this thing where he, like, won't talk to Miss Havisham. He just, like, talks to Pip. Oh. So she'll ask him a question. He'll be like, well, Pip, we do this, don't we? <laughs> like, and Pip's like, dude. <laughs> you're so embarrassing. The Gargeries, Pumblechook, and Wopsle take him out for a dinner to celebrate, but he's sul- sullen and salty all night. Well, he doesn't want to be a blitz, me. Mm. Now he's been in the fancy house, he can imagine nothing worse than being stuck at home, stuck at the forge all his life. So for the next few years, as Pip becomes a teenager, he works at the forge for Joe. And he's getting increasingly bitter, as teenagers are wont to do. Mm. But he keeps it to himself. Because he does love Joe. And he doesn't want like, Joe to feel bad. Yeah, how's his abusive sister? Still around. So anyway, <laughs> Joe has hired another man called Orlick. Uh-oh. Who's a winning combination of vicious and stupid. Oh. <laughs> Pip asks Joe for like a half day off because he plans to visit Miss Havisham to say thank you, I guess, even though Joe advised against it because he'd come off like he wanted something. It was his whole thing. I get it. Um, anyway, but he like, just wants to go up to the house again. <laughs> He's like, I just want to feel nice. I just want to feel fancy. Anyway, Orlick demands that he get a half day off as well because, <sighs> because it's only really fair or whatever. And because Joe's a sweetie and a pushover, he acquiesces to both of them. Oh, Joe. 
When Mrs. Joe learns of this, she and Orlick have a huge shouting match. And Mrs. Joe demands that Joe defend her honor. So he, like, wearily beats up Orlick. He's like, oh, nuts. <laughs> and he, like, beats up Orlick. <laughs> He's like, Ugh. So kind of, like, put him in his place and defend her honor. <sighs> When Pip visits Miss Havisham again, he learns that Estella has been sent to school in Paris. Oh. So he's bummed. Um, but then he visits Pumblechook, who has Wopsle around, and they're reading a play together. <laughs> they're, like, out loud at the table. Wopsle is obsessed with the dramatic arts, which is, like, barely important later, so I have to bring it up. That's literally us when we were reading that play out loud for, like, months on end, that awful play that someone in my course wrote. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yes. It was the screenplay. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, every time we had a party, every we would we would get out. together because it was it was hilariously just bad, pinnacle of terrible. And he took it so seriously too. Mm-hmm. He thought he was like an advocate for like violence against women. I'm like, this is violent to women. <laughs> <laughs> just reading this. The and yeah, Simon would do the um the villain. Yeah, the best. But like as like a guy who ties people to the railroad tracks, kind of cartoon <laughs> like villain, Wiley mustache Coyote. twirling, like. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a buddy. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff. I still have that screenplay somewhere. I have the video somewhere. A I took video? a video of like yeah, us performing it and like took a video. it wasn't the whole thing, but it was like <gasps> parts of it and were performed in like um I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's great. We should watch that. We should watch that. Put it on the TV. Okay. <laughs> on his way home from Papa Jokes, he sees all like skulking around in the shadows. Well, he did get hella beat. Mm-hmm. And he hears gunfire from the prison hulks out on the Whoa. water. When he gets home, he discovers that Mrs. Joe was violently attacked when she was alone in the house. She's alive, but has been severely brain damaged and will be invalid for the rest of her life. Brain? Oh my god, what did they do to her? Um, she was like attacked, mm-hmm. like in the kitchen or something, and, and she fell and like and had head trauma, mm. and now she's like bedridden. It's crazy. She's like a vegetable, I'm guessing now, just because. Like, yeah, I think she. It comes to the point where she can like write single like letters, and she uses that to communicate with people. But also, she's a lot happier. It seems to them like she doesn't. She just she's always like, ah, she, you know, like I don't know the way you would say someone's happier if they had a, like a lobotomy. Oh, she had lobotomized she, pretty much, like violently. Like, <laughs> a violent lobotomy. Is there ever like a tame one, <laughs> like a, a nice lobotomy? <laughs> you know, I'm calming, calming. I'm watching Riverdale again, therapeutic. And um, there was this really great line where um Betty confronts um her ex friend who betrayed her, and she was like. You drag me by my ankles for me to get a lobotomy. And I'm like, I love this show. <laughs> Whoa. That happened. Jesus. She didn't get the lobotomy. She got out. Good. Time. That's cr- oh, But um, that's there's also a scene not, where um, okay. Chad Michael Murray is in full evil Knievel costume. <laughs> nice. I've got like a short clip of it I will show you. Maybe we should watch that. I just, it's such a, if you ever want to just feel insulted watch Ruben like, how dare they do this to me I love it <laughs> okay so escaped convicts are suspected of the act Re- you know the gunfire from before oh, no. but Pip suspects Orlick because he has a motive remember or Joe no Joe Joe loved her he's really upset Biddy joins the household to take care of Pip's sister Mrs. Joe interesting um, during this time, Pip confides to Biddy about his aspirations and dissatisfactions with his life, and she tells him to let it go or he'll never be happy. <laughs> he tells her about Estella, who he's decided he's in love with. She advises him to forget Estella, obviously, because Estella clearly hates him. He's not in love with her. <laughs> and he rejects her advice immediately and, like, yells at her a little bit. <laughs> yep. Um, but then he learns that Orlick has been stalking Biddy and trying to flirt with her. And then he gets all protective and jealous. Where does he meet Biddy? That's from school, right? Biddy's from school, yeah. Yeah. So she's, like, taking care of Mrs. Joe now. Mm. One night, Pip is at the pub, and Wopsle is reading them all a newspaper story about a current murder trial, and everyone <gasps> reckons the dude is guilty. But then a tall stranger starts questioning Wopsle about details of the case. To Tywin. Turning his argument around, yeah. He said tall. It's Charles Dance. It's... <laughs> Um, who turns out to be a lawyer from London by the of name of Jaggers. Jaggers? Jaggers. That's his first or last name? That's his last name. I, I don't know his Those both his names. Jaggers, <laughs> Jaggers. Jaggers. <laughs> JJ. Jaggers like, like meek. He asks for the blacksmith's apprentice named <gasps> Pip. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> and when he finds him, he tells him that he's about to inherit a large fortune. Why? That um, he, Jaggers, has been tasked with managing and like distributing to him. Interesting. Because he's like, until he comes of age, he only can go through From Jaggers. that old, the creepy woman. Well, 
Oh. These are the terms. Pip will move to London immediately and begin his education well, that's fine. as a gentleman. That's what he wants. And he is not to know the identity of his benefactor. Sure, why not? <laughs> so, Pip immediately becomes a complete asshole. Well, yeah. As you would. He gets himself a new suit of clothes and fucks off to London without so much as a buy or leave. <laughs> Although in the carriage ride on the way there, he has like a brief moment of doubt where he feels bad about being an asshole to Joe and Biddy, but then he remembers he's super rich, I guess. Timothy Chalamet would be really good in this. He would? Um, oh gosh, who plays him? So there's a there's a adaptation where Gillian Anderson is Miss Havisham, and she's amazing. Like, from the From the X-Files, yeah. Oh, so wow. who's the guy? Timothy Chalamet. You've seen him before. Douglas Booth. Show me his face. This boy. I guess. He's like in British stuff. He's kind of cute. Yeah. Well, he's really punchable. In, in oh yeah look how punchable that is yeah that's good yeah i get it yeah all right good and you're like no i don't feel sorry for you oh look there was one there's jillian and why don't you have in douglas booth um great expectations so i can see what he looks like 92 so he's kate's age <laughs> yeah no kate's 93 like me just february oh okay yeah oh yep yep no and see there's jillian it essentially is amazing Oh, I, I wonder if this is on. Can I borrow the... No, you know what? I'll use my phone. <laughs> I want to see if it's on anything. What did she say? That's BBC. Might be uh, able to get it. But I just wish it was on something. Anyway, do. Anyway. Yeah. So he's rich now. Anyway, we get a couple of paragraphs about how much Dickens hates London. Oh. Which we do in pretty much every book. He's just like, did I mention? <laughs> <laughs> like, as always, the streets a are filthy. <laughs> Um, okay, so Pip meets up with Jaggers at his office. <laughs> Turns out Jaggers is, like, famous. People oh. crowd around his offices waiting for him to come out. And when he does, they, like, yell after him, begging him to take on their cases or the cases of their family members. He's, like, this hotshot criminal lawyer. He's Elwood. He's... <laughs> he is Elwood. And he, like, speaks to them in single sentences, which mostly consists of... No, Elwood wouldn't do that. Never mind. He's like, did you pay Wemmick? <laughs> Don't talk to me until you pay Wemmick. And he's like, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Stuff like that. Oh, I'm so upset. I just realized that this is just a dream casting. I thought when we eventually watched it, it would be Charles No, Sands, it's someone it's else. He's really good, though. The guy they do have. <laughs> anyway. Oh, and one of the people is like, please, will you take on my case? And he's like, I'm already for the other side. And they're like, <laughs> they're like, sing to their knees. And I'm like, no. Nah! Because <laughs> uh, it means they're going to lose. But anyway. When we go up to his office, oh, and his office is weird and creepy. It's like he's got like two, you know how they used to do plaster casts of like the faces of hanged convicts? No, but sure. They used to do that. Anyway, and he's got two of them up there. Apparently famous convicts that he had hanged. Or that he defended. I'm not sure. (laughs) Why would you have someone you defended up there that died? I'm not like a fond remembrance. (laughs) No, it's like, oh, remember when I failed you? I don't know. Anyway, we learned that this Wemmick he talked about is his main clerk. He's like his secretary kind of dude. Um, and he's a cheery but cynical guy whose fingers are covered in mourning rings. Ew, what is that? Um, so mourning rings is like to remember a dead person by. Oh, M-O-U-R-N. Are, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you said mourning like the day and I'm like, are they, is it like a ringworm? I don't... No, no, no. Mourning rings. So it's like... Um, Why does he have so many dead people in his hands? <laughs> because they're all clients. That died? Yes. Why did they keep dying? Who were put to death and they're like... <laughs> well, because, you know, everything was being put to death back then. Like you, you steal a loaf of bread and you get put to death. That's how it is. But yeah, like they all loved him. They all thought he was great. So they'll, and if they had no family or no friends as well, they're like, here, have a, like a morning ring on me to remember me by. And he's like, you got it. So he's got just like stacks of rings. <laughs> yeah, of like, like dead people. He can't even move his fingers. They're just like covered in rings. And he's yeah. just like, you're going to have to So, do And this. he has one of these phrases, one of those things that Charles Dickens like is repeating all the time, like ironically, like winking at the paper. What's, and what's it's the phrase? Um, portable property. He's like, the, the most important thing in life is portable property. Does he mean Because that's how you money? Can, yeah, pretty much. But like, but not like in the bank and not like land. Oh, like Stuff stashed, you can take with you if you need to pack uh, up and go. Dude, like stashed in the toilet tank. Oh, well, not toilet he's tank. He's a hoarder. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, exactly. Now he's like a survivalist. You know, he's got like a bunker. <laughs> well, wait, we just wait for it. What? Oh my God. Um, what makes the best? Like, I love him. Right? <laughs> so, oh, and another thing about Jaggers, which I didn't write down, but which I love about him is he's constantly washing his hands. Washing his hands. Yeah, every time he comes back from court, he like washes his hands. It's almost like the symbolic thing. Yeah, he's, he's like washing his hands of the filth that he has to deal with all day. Yeah. And when he's particularly stressed, he'll like scrape under his nails and like. <laughs> Isabel does that. Uh, she's stressed from court. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, um, so so he like smells of soap all the time as well. He's like this really overpowering soap smell. I wouldn't mind that. I'd rather have. Yeah, it's better that than like beer. Or like. 
dead people. Yeah. So, Wemmick introduces Pip to Herbert Pocket. What? <laughs> Another super cute name. Herbert Pocket is the son of the man who's going to be Pip's tutor and who he's going to room with. Okay. So, same age as him? Mm-hmm. They immediately like each other. Oh, Herbert nice. is a sweet, easygoing little egg. And also, as they're both shocked to realize, he's the pale boy that Pip bashed <gasps> up at Santa's house. <laughs> Yay! History. Yeah. He oh, and in the in the um, BBC, he's played by the guy whose name I forget, but he played Viserys in oh, Game of Thrones. That's a really good. Yeah. <laughs> he's a great actor, and he's actually like so cute and sweet in this. Oh. <laughs> it's lovely. So they have a good laugh together about that. Remember when I beat you senseless? <laughs> yeah, and it was my idea. <laughs> what was, what did he say? What was that thing you did that I really liked when he wiped blood off his mouth? <laughs> he was like, "Good show." <laughs> <laughs> Like fisticuffs. <laughs> um, so while Pip has loads of money, <laughs> yeah. um, Herbert has a title and not much money at all, right? Oh, I get it. Yeah. Um, we did. So he's like a gentleman, but struggling. So he's doing his best to get work as a shipping merchant, but he's not having much luck. Mm. And it's How another one of those like Pip little. Now? Like 17? There, yeah, I guess 18, mm. maybe. Um, another one of those little ironic sayings he has is Herbert's always looking about him. For work, but but it also kind of means not doing anything. <laughs> oh, I get that. So I'll go into the city and look about me. <laughs> oh, um, oh, Herbert. Pip asks Herbert for help to become a gentleman, and he happily helps him out with things like table <gasps> manners. Oh, it's a pretty woman. It literally is. In the, um, in the adaptation, not in the book, but in the adaptation, he teaches him how to dance. <laughs> is it a movie or a series? It's a, it's a mini-series of three, oh, I think, 90-minute episodes. And Herbert also fills Pip in on all the high society know-how and goss. For example, did you know that Miss Havisham fell in love with a man of a much lower social class than her? <gasps> who convinced her to buy her prodigal half-brother's share of the family brewery for a huge price. <gasps> but on their wedding day, the man never appeared and sent her a note letting her know that she was jilted. Which <gasps> arrived at exactly 20 minutes to nine. <gasps> Did you know that most people think it was probably all a scheme from the start of her half brothers who'd squandered his own share of the family money this whole time? So that's why it's always twenty to mm-hmm. nine. And she hasn't taken up her winning and she only has one shoe on because she only had one shoe on when she got the letter. So she just never got over it. Yeah. In like a big way. <laughs> yeah, in a very big way. I feel like there are you, you can get you can move on <laughs> <laughs> there might have been other things going on with her but anyway well that was um, pretty severe she's like here yeah okay money what <laughs> although herbert doesn't know the deal with estella oh, how no. she came to be in miss havisham's care do we find that. out the deal with that one well maybe <laughs> oh that's a yes you, you've Pit. got that look on your Ooh, face do I? <laughs> stop twirling your mustache and get to it pip spends a while being tutored when he meets two other dudes fellow students One's called Bentley Drummond, hmm. yeah. who's just the worst of the worst. He's like a dickhead jock type. Oh. And a lord who went to eat and all something. <laughs> Talks like this. <laughs> Good show. <laughs> More like bad show. Why does he <laughs> talk you, like this all the time? <laughs> Now that's comedy. <laughs> Pip. More like Pip Squeak. Get over here. <laughs> noggy, noggy. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, and there's another guy called Startop who's just like nice. Startop? I know, it's weird, right? But yeah. Startop? Startop or Startop? I'm not sure. Anyway, he's he's alright. He's a good dude. Okay. That's good um, so anyway, over this time he has dinner at Jagger's and Wemmick's. Wemmick is a leave work at work and home at home kind of guy. So in his day to day, his passions <laughs> are looking after his aging father and renovating his house into a medieval castle. <laughs> Why is Wemmick David? Complete with a moat. And a drawbridge. <laughs> Wemmick's the ring guy, right? Yeah. That's David. Yeah, a little bit. David's our friend who... Um, who does this. He's renovating his house. <laughs> he's not. Houses. But he does do LARPing. And he... He tailors, makes books, dude. He, yeah, he makes like handmade books in the that's like a medieval awesome. like, method. If you've seen the end of Little Women, that's David's hands. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, not. it's not, but it could have been, which is... Was amazing. I know he can do that. He, yeah, he, he can. can make a book, and I'm like, I can't read. <laughs> um, Jagger's house, on the other hand, is just like him, dark and scary. <laughs> of course, <laughs> he seems to share it only with his housekeeper, who's a quiet and mysterious woman called Molly. Ooh. Joe comes to visit Pip, who acts like a complete asshole because he's afraid Joe will embarrass him. Yeah. So <gasps> the visit's strained and awkward, except you know who Joe is. Did you ever watch Cinderella 2 where one of the ugly stepsisters <laughs> falls in love with the baker? No. He's the baker. Is he the baker? I, I kind of I know kind of the vibe though. It's I know what baker. you're talking about. Yeah. 
But he's a blacksmith. He bakes. Horse Metal. Shoes. Yeah. Horse shoes. <laughs> um, so the visit's strained and awkward, except Joe mentioned, mentions Estella is back at Satter's house <gasps> and wants to see Pip. And suddenly Pip feels a lot more kindly towards Joe. Is anyone surprised? I wrote that down. <laughs> <laughs> Pip later goes home. Let Pip have it. Like, he doesn't know what it's like to have money. And now he has money. And he's like, oh, ho, ho. Um, <laughs> Pip later goes home planning to see Estella and apologize to Joe. Except if it turned out he only did one of those things, which one do you think it would be? Oh, my God. He did not apologize to Joe. He did not apologize to Joe. That's so rude. Joe's like, hey, what's the big idea? He's going, ah, oh, Pip. Ah, oh, Pip. Pip feels pretty good about himself as he rocks up to Satter's house, but finds Orlick is the porter at the gate now. <laughs> Grossed out, he immediately sets about getting him fired. He like, writes a letter to Jaggers later, like fire this dude. Um, Estella has grown up into a supermodel. Of course she has. Um, and wow. he immediately starts feeling inadequate again. <laughs> good. Um, Miss Havisham beseeches him to love Estella in a super intense, creepy way. Like in a, a side moment, she's like, love her, love her with all of your heart. And again, he's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> like he just brushes it off. Yeah, when she was like, break Man, their hearts. Man, she's heart. kind of intense. <laughs> break their hearts. He's like, what? <laughs> um, he walks with Estella in the garden a bit and she's cold to him and he's upset about it. And she says, like, I have no heart. Like She's, she's like nagging him. A bit, but she's honestly, she's just saying, just no, I'm not that into you. <laughs> That's what I get from it. So when Pip gets back to London, he unloads to Herbert, who says, "Hey, even if Miss Havisham is your mystery benefactor, that doesn't necessarily mean she intends you two to marry, right? So maybe, and I'm speaking as your friend, lower your great expectations a little." He said the title. <laughs> oh my God, I Herbert! Oh, <laughs> no, you didn't say that. Oh, but he does mention the title a lot. But it's usually Charles Dickens, like he in his winky me. little way. But Herb also has news. He's in love with a poor girl called Clara, who his mother will hate, but he's secretly engaged to her. Oh. But they can't afford a wedding just yet because oh. he ain't got no money. Can't Pip just throw them, like, a couple of pounds? Mm -hmm. Well. Does he have, like, an allowance or something? He has to ask Jagus for money until he's 21, in which, in which event so he thing. has an income. Like a um, regular income, if that makes Jaggers sense. Jaggers is like, she's a sugar daddy. Well, he's, he's his guardian, officially, I think. Did so. I stutter? <laughs> I said what I said. A sugar guardian. <laughs> sugar guardian. Soft daddy. <laughs> so, Estella returns to London. And Pip is required to escort and help her. Ugh. Though she's as rude as and cold as ever, Pip is excited in the way she talks about them being thrown together and their instructions was... Which make it sound like they're intended to be married. Pip starts feeling guilty for being a bad influence on Herbert. Basically, they're both going, kind of going into debt. How? Just loaning. Like, I don't, I don't what know. What are they doing right they're now? They're like, in, they're in a club where they go and have lunch. And they pay for that. Like, I don't know. It's dumb. Oh. And he's also feeling guilty about icing out Joe and Biddy. He tries to help Herb by initiating a cataloging of their respective debts. But midway through, they learn that Pip's sister has died. He, like, gets a letter while they're doing that. Um, so Mrs. Joe's dead. No, oh, good for her. <sighs> yeah. Pip goes home for the funeral and is surprised at how sad he is for his sister's death. Oh. Mm. I guess that was the closest thing he had to, like, a mom. Yeah. And it's, it's so like, cool. you know, you feel conflicted. You feel like you owe... You know, people can, can, can feel conflicted. <laughs> you know, people are complex. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Except Jagus. He's just... I know, ice cold, baby. You know who he is? He's, um, but hopefully not predatory. He's the character in Legally Blonde Musical, the, um, the professor, the, um, the one that yeah. sees blood in the water. Yeah. That's him. Yeah, he's not predatory like that. No. Good. He as far as I am aware. He doesn't try to kiss sure Woods. Oh, God. So Callahan! Callahan! Jaggers. Jaggers. That's a dope name. Yeah. That's one thing I like about Charles Dickens is everyone has really appropriate names for their, like, personality. They're so cute. Yeah. Herb. Herb. I call him Herb. He's always called Herbert in the book. And anytime I think of the name Herbert, I just think of, um... Herbie Bridget fully Jones loaded? Oh. No. <laughs> Bridget Jones' diary when she has to introduce her boss and they call him Tits Pervert instead of um, Mr... Fitzherbert. Fitzherbert. Because uh, he yeah. looks at tits. her tits all the time. And she's yeah. like, Tits Pervert. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, Herbert, yeah. He tries to mend things with Joe and Biddy, and it's nice. Like, they connect. Good. Um, except when he oh. promises to visit more often, Biddy is skeptical, and she's right to be, because he doesn't. So. Yes, Biddy, get it. <laughs> Pip turns 21 at last. 
Yay. Which means he'll receive a regular income from his money rather than having to go ask Dragus about rather than having to go ask Dragus for it, as we discussed. He's excited because he thinks this means he's going to be allowed to learn the identity of his benefactor at last. Now that he's kind of come into not. this majority. Oh my god, is but it's of the But he's surprised convicts? and disappointed to find that it's not the case. Is it all the convicts? They came into money. They I don't know the, They won like the tats loto and they're like, what's that kid that gave me his bread pants? Pant bread. Pant bread. <laughs> pant bread. <laughs> you go for some pant bread. You got me some pant bread but no one would give me anything. <laughs> He, what was he? He gave me pant bread when no one else. Would. No one else would. When no one else would give me pant nor bread. <laughs> he invites Jaggers to his birthday dinner, oh, kind of out fun. of obligation with her, but which is weird and oppressive because Jaggers is weird and oppressive. <laughs> oh, Jaggers. Pip finally decides to do something good. He helps out Herb by buying Herb's way into the shipping business fun. without Herb knowing. Finally. He enlists Wemmick's help, and it's cute, because Wemmick initially tells him, because he asks him at the office, and he's like, go to the nearest bridge and throw your money down there. It will be just as effective as throwing your money out to a friend. And then he's Wemmick. like, and he's like, this is my professional opinion. And Pip's like, oh, what's your non-professional opinion? He's like, come to my house for dinner. And then he goes to his house for dinner, and he's like, all right, let's help her. <laughs> this guy, the duality of Wemmick. <laughs> It's really fun. It's There's really, like I work Wemmick and like home life Wemmick. Exactly. He keeps, he keeps a, and never the twain shall meet. And he's like, talk to me after five, Pip. I'll tell you what I really think. <laughs> um, so yeah, so, so as soon as they're back at the castle, Wemmick helps him out. And they have a lovely dinner where Pip meets, Pip Meeps. meets <laughs> Wemmick's girlfriend, Miss Gibbons. But keep it on the deal. <laughs> He's Why? got a lady friend. Is that not allowed? Well, like, it's improper a little bit. Oh, did I have to be married? Mm. Mm. Why doesn't Wemmick want to... He doesn't want to scare her away, either. Like, Why can't yeah. they just get married? Hold on. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm held. <laughs> now, these days, Pip is always over at Estella's being rejected. Yep. Just, you know. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Um, he's taken around with her to watch her, like, toy with and dismiss other suitors. Mm-hmm. Maybe she's, she's there. He's friend zoned. It just sounds like she's a really but beautiful. But like not friend zoned. She's like a really beautiful, angry lesbian. Maybe. She can't be a lesbian back then. She, she'd get she killed. Yeah. She'd get straight up murdered. Maybe that's. Hmm, poor right? Thing. When they go to visit Miss Havisham together at one time, Pip sees them at odds for the first time. Oh. Miss Havisham demands attention and love from Estella, who bitterly rebuffs her. She's like, I am what you made me. That's true. When they were kids, mm. she was like, make him suffer. And she was like, Okay, yeah. fake mom. She's like, you can't, yeah, you can't, you've turned me into a weapon, you can't blame me if, is, um, if I cut you too. Or so, it's something like that. She's is she, like um, that. is she still in her wedding dress? Oh, yeah. This one? Ugh. Does she bathe Oh, ever? yeah. I'm not sure, maybe spend bath, but yeah, it's, it's dirty. Oh. But also, she probably doesn't piss by her. That's true, she doesn't move. She just sits in a chair. I know, doesn't she have, like, bed sores by now? She doesn't move. No, she does, she does, like, hobble around the house. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. When, when no oh, I didn't tell you before. So what? um, she, while, when, when he was a child there, she like takes him into a side room. And um, in the side room, there's a huge table, which is laid out as if for like a wedding feast. Oh. And there's like this huge mass in the middle of like cobwebs and mold. And it's the wedding cake. And there's like bugs living in it. And there's like mice scuttling around. And it's disgusting. She's like an unfun corpse bride. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a little. But like living, which is worse somehow. Living corpse bride. She is a living corpse, isn't she? She hasn't moved on from that. She's basically mm-hmm. like dead. Yeah. Okay. Oh, poor her. Pip learns shortly, with great horror, that Bentley Drummel is courting Estella. You know, <laughs> like this. <laughs> yes. Pip squeak. Pip, more like Pip squeak. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes and you know, yeah. That's my one joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bentley Drawl. Um, she's paying him lots of attention, apparently. Yes. <laughs> Enough! <laughs> Pip is now 23. <laughs> I'm going to do the rest of the... No, I can't. I lost it. Okay, no. one night, as a thunderstorm rages outside, Pip hears heavy footsteps coming up the stairs. It's a convict. An old sailor appears on his threshold. The man greets him warmly, but Pip is nervous and standoffish until he recognizes him at last. His convict from the marshes. You were right. Ha! Horrified, Pip... The first one? Yes. Yeah. Horrified, Pip learns the story of this man, whose name he learns is Abel Magwitch, which was another great name. Magwitch? Magwitch. A maggot sandwich. And Abel. <laughs> Um, he was 
sentenced to transportation in Australia represent oh. where he made a gigantic fortune sheep farming. Loads of money sheep farming. A lot of people did. Um, that's actually quite believable. So he's anyway, the benefactor. Yeah, he never forgot the boy who was so kind to him and decided to use his money to improve that little boy's station. <laughs> I can't believe I fucking got it. Which he managed <laughs> Fuck through you, Chuck Deck. <laughs> his one-time defense lawyer, Jaggers. Ah. So the fact that Jaggers is Ms. Havisham's lawyer too is a complete coincidence. Ah. Well, he, he sounds like he's the guy to go to, you know? Yeah, he sure He's is. the go-to guy for law. Um, <laughs> Pitt barely has time to process that his dream of marrying Estella is well and truly crushed. Um, because he learns that even now Magwitch is on the run. It's death if he's caught back on English soil. Why is he back in English soil? Stay in Australia. He simply doing? wanted to meet the boy at last who'd saved him that day and whose station he had raised so dramatically. Oh, that's kind of nice. Yeah. Pip, even though he's kind of the worst, recognizes that he has an obligation to this man. So yeah, he feeds him do. and invites him to sleep there that night. And then go back to Australia so you don't get mm-hmm. killed. Yeah. And the comic's like, look at you here, Pip, I'm your second father. You're my son, more to me, nor any son. I put away money only for you to spend. It's what? Really, it's kind of sweet. That's what he says. That's okay. what Magwitch says. I was like, did you just write that down? <laughs> in the morning. Yeah, I just wrote it. It's not in the book at all. Let me hide your Charles. <laughs> I'm Chuck Duck. <laughs> like a ghostwriter over the years, like the Nancy Drew series. Yeah. Um. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, like, they, they change writers. <laughs> what? No. In the morning, Pip trips over a man sleeping in the staircase in the it's- shadows and freaks out calling the watchman. But by the time they return, the man is gone. Wasn't it the sailor? No, no, no. He put him up in a bed for the night. So someone was sleeping on the stairs? Yeah. Why? You'll find it. Pip arranges a disguise and an alias for Magwitch, so they call him Provis. Oh my god, does he have to wear, like, um, Groucho Marx glasses? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's suddenly apparent to him how real the situation is. He's like, oh, wait, this is actually his life or death. Yeah. Um, people, like, are looking for this guy. Yeah, Pip. They sure are. When Herb gets home, they decide on a plan to get Mag... Herb's, like, just on board. He's, like, ride or die. Yeah. They decide on a plan to get Magwitch safely into Europe, and Pip resolves not to take any more money from him, the man, because he still feels iffy about it, because he's, like, a convict. So how is he going to make it? Whatever. Right, he'll just figure going. it out. Um, maybe he'll just be a blacksmith <laughs> again. Mm. During Magwitch's residence there, we learn his backstory. He's a career criminal, born into it. His earliest memory is stealing turnips to feed himself. Oh. As a young... I know it's sad. <laughs> That's Charles Dickens. Um, you can steal anything you want and you choose turn. I'm so he's pressed his face to the window of the turnip store like one day. <laughs> <laughs> as a young the turnip st- <laughs> <laughs> As a young man, he met a gentleman criminal named Compasson, who sort of pressed him into service, who got him got him into his his criminal sort of um, organization, I guess, who just made him into his accomplice basically. Um, Compasson had already driven another accomplice mad. Um, and his name was Arthur, and it was apparently on account of a wealthy woman the two had victimized one time, who haunted him ho, ho, ho. Uh, in a white funeral shroud. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I wonder who it is. Well, uh, per chance. Um, t- <laughs> turns out Compasson is the other convict with whom Magwitch fought on the marshes all those years ago. Yeah. Herbert clues in that Arthur is Miss Havisham's half-brother. It all connects, man. That was me. That wasn't Herbert. <laughs> Just in case you're confused. <laughs> Good trip. Oh. Bip. Bip. <laughs> you just so badly want to say Brad Pitt. <laughs> Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. <laughs> Goes to see Miss Havisham and Estella one final time. Kind of to say goodbye, I guess. He's kind of given up on being part of their lives now. He's kind of come come to pip, come to terms in a way. Come to Pip with it. Come to Pip. <laughs> He's Pip to Pip. Pip entreats her to use her fortune to help Herbert, as he won't be able to once he stops receiving money. Why does he, why does he just stop? He can just keep going. Well, he can't... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> morals or whatever. Um, now he has he's, morals. He kind of tells her officer, he's like, you ruined my life by making me love Estella. Yeah, sure. Nah. Um, you can do if you can do one kind thing, please do this, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And he also declares his, Estella's there. She's like knitting. He also declares his love for Estella. She like doesn't look at him. She just keeps knitting. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's true. I didn't make that up. And she coldly replies that she never pretended to love him. She never like let him on or anything. No. She was just always mean to him, and he was like, I think she likes. <laughs> one me. day, well, one day she'll be mine. <laughs> <laughs> one day. <laughs> <laughs> she also lets him know that she's decided to marry Drummle. So double ouch. 
Your fave. My fave. <laughs> oh, can you do a, a thing of him saying their wedding vows real quick? <laughs> I'm badly drunk. Thank you. Estella. <laughs> no last name. my uh, lawfully wedded wife. <laughs> do you happen to hold? <laughs> to death do us part, yes? <laughs> Very good. Now we all turn, pretty lady. <laughs> Oh, how can you love someone like that? <laughs> Tell you later. Is, is Josh like that? <laughs> no. I was at your wedding. Just you did not me. say how it was. You have to hurl. <laughs> can you imagine? Would that be worse than the laugh? <laughs> um, I would like For a you. double combo. <laughs> 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 and then you're crying in your beautiful dress. <laughs> Uh, I brought you a cake. Thank you. Just you a cake. <laughs> Thank you, Cassandra. Cake. Cake. Soon to be. <laughs> Soon to be. <laughs> I presume. <laughs> but one mustn't presume. <laughs> what do you presume? Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> so he tells We're off We're so the, near the end. All right. He tells off the ladies. He does. Um, yeah, so she's going to marry Drummel. Miss Havisham, however, seems devastated. And she's looking at Pip the whole time with, like, regret and pity. I think she's, like, realizing... Regret and poopy, yeah. Poopy. <laughs> um, did I say that? I said pity, right? Yeah, you said pity. Okay, good. <laughs> um, she's, I guess she's realizing, like, oh, no, what, this horrible thing that happened to her, she inflicted that on to someone else. And, yeah. and maybe she, that's not what she really wanted. She did it to, like, two people. Mm-hmm. Right, keep going. Back in London... He keeps like slingshotting back and forth between like the marshes and London. But yeah, anyway, he's just taking the V line. <laughs> back in London, they move Magwitch in with Herb's fiance Clara's family to keep him from being discovered. Which is kind of nice. She just lives with her dad, and he's like gouty and like in a room upstairs. So Magwitch is just boarding there. Um, apparently the rumor's out that he's in London, and they convince people are watching them. Why do they want him so bad? It's been years. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't know. Get over it. Um, <laughs> Pip and Herb hatch a plan to get Magwitch on a rowboat and out to a steamer bound for. <laughs> I wrote, I don't know, Denmark or something, but <laughs> it's Germany. I, I, I found out it's Germany. <laughs> I don't know, Togas. <laughs> <laughs> Pip goes to the theater and learns from Wopsle, he's an actor now, it's dumb, I know, um, that he saw Compass and remember Wopsle was there the day they found the two convicts? Yes. In the audience near yeah. Pip, so that's spooky and suspicious. That's the only reason I ever brought up Wopsles, just for that plot point. He goes to dinner. Pip goes to dinner with Jaggers. And he realizes that Molly looks just like Estella. Who the fuck is Molly? The housekeeper. Remember the shady housekeeper? Oh. Of Jaggers? The only other person in the oh. house? Oh. Another mystery is unfolding. So Molly's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Pip learns from Wemmick that Molly was accused of murdering another woman over her common-law husband. Um, so it was like a jealous rage. And that there was a baby girl that went missing, and they presumed she murdered the baby girl. Um, but Jaggers got her acquitted. There was no evidence of the baby girl existing, and, and they got her acquitted. But he managed to get her off somehow. Pip visits Miss Havisham one last time to sort out Herbert's job stuff. Um, Miss Havisham expresses feelings of great regret and guilt over encouraging Estella to break his heart. And he's, she sobs and clings to him, begging for forgiveness. And he feels sorry for her and he forgives her. And it's, it's all very nice and morbid. Morbid. <laughs> and as he goes to leave, he has... This... As he goes to leave, he just looks behind. He's like, change out of your wedding dress. <laughs> Once in a while. <laughs> and he just like raises his hand. <laughs> and And simple minds don't um, you forget about me. So it's playing. <laughs> he has like this creepy vision of her hanging. Oh, good. As he leaves, and he's like, ugh. And he, like, he's <laughs> like, ugh. I don't want to <laughs> And he's like, you know what? I'm going to go back and check on her. Is she, did she hang herself? Mm. Right as he gets there, he sees her bend over the fireplace and catch fire. What the fuck? And go up in a huge blaze. Her, like, old wedding dress. <sighs> I love hereditary. <laughs> he uses his coat and the tablecloth from the rotted wedding feast to yep. put her out. Like, he pulls it off and everything goes flying in the rabbit oh, like, scurrying away. I thought he did, like, the cool trick where like, everything <laughs> stays on the table. I know. Like, <laughs> like, the, like, the guy who used to do, like, vines of it or something, and he was always naked and would, like, have, like, a teacup covering his dick. Did you ever see that? No, but oh my god. And he would, like, pull out the fabric from under it, but the teacup would stay there. And, That's like, amazing. He wouldn't, <laughs> he wouldn't ever see anything. Man, Anyway. Fine. Gosh, back in the day. Anyway. Um, so it was like that. Um, no, everything came like crashing down. But anyway, um, she manages to live. Yeah. But just barely. For his part, Pip's hands and arms are burned. Oh, no. Third degree. 
I mean, Herb attends to him and changes his bandages, and it's all very sweet. Oh, Herb. Love Little Herb. bro. Yeah. Fight him once, love him forever. Yeah. Herb tells Pip that he's found out that Magwitch has a woman in his past, and they connect the dots. It's Molly. Yeah. Magwitch is Estella's father. Magwitch is Estella's father. That was Man, my this, brain exploding. This convict is, just has all his convict fingers and all these pies. <laughs> you know? He's just like, I'm connected to things. that too. And that. <laughs> yeah, I'm strolling this, this is Chuck Duck trying to be clever. Like, I was a convict. Oh, no. You don't think it was someone like, wrap it up. <laughs> He's like, oh god, I got all these loose ends. He's like, oh, but my bed. Pip confronts Jaggers and gets like a neither confirmed nor deny sort of answer, but it's like confirmed. It's, yeah, I mean. Jagger's is like, no comment. No comment. He's like, I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> no comment. Um, Pip receives an anonymous note threatening that unless Pip comes to the marshes in secret on a particular night, something bad's going to happen to his Uncle Provis. Him, I'm rushing through this. What but, the fuck, Uncle? What, why are you rushing? Because um, like, so much happens in like the last like three chapters of the book. and It's just like, let's wrap it up, Chuck. Um, Uncle Provis is, is Magwitch's secret name. He does go. When he gets to the agreed spot of the meeting... Yeah, he, he, he gives in very easily to, like, blackmail. Isn't well, it? this is the thing. He was thinking... It's actually, like, a good thing that he does because he's like, if I was going to learn something that night that could save Magwitch and I didn't go, I'll never figure myself for it. God, Does I that hate that sense? name so much. Magwitch? <laughs> Just Maggot Sandwich. Maggot Sandwich. <laughs> um, so he goes. And as soon as he gets there, he... Um, a man jumps him. He gets beaten and tied up. He can't see his attacker. It's, like, pitch black. Um, his attacker tells him he'll be killed if he calls for help. And then, like, a flint gets struck in the darkness. And by the light of the sparks, he sees the face of none other than Orlick. Here I am, just like, yeah, and then what? <laughs> Orlick gloats over capturing Pip and airs his grievances, mainly that Pip came between him and Biddy. Mm-hmm. And also got him fired from his job at his house. Not really. Pip was just like, I want a half day. And Orlick was like, well, me too. No, no, he, no his job at Satis house. Remember how he was the doorkeeper there he was the gate guy yeah, how, did, how did he get him oh yeah he was, he was like jaggers by that guy yeah. <laughs> jaggers <was> like <laughs> okay <laughs> jaggers was like sure <laughs> he also admits to killing mrs joe or to like attacking mrs joe leading yeah. leading to her um yeah injury orlick also reveals that he has some sort of connection with Compasson and that he was the man in the shadowy stairwell that pip tripped over remember why because he's spying on him in herbert and, yeah herbert and startup Managed to save him though. Remember, start up, he's back. <laughs> sure. Right in the nick of time. Oh, there they um, are. Because they have to rush home to execute the escape plan. So it's all going well. They're in their little boat on the river, rowing, rowing along. Yeah, to Denmark slash to- Germany. <laughs> the German ship. Um, until suddenly another rowboat appears with a few men in it. A police <laughs> it says robot. <laughs> a robot. So one of the men in it is a police officer. And he's calling for Magwitch's arrest. Oh, They've no. been... That's sp- Javert. <laughs> yes. Magwitch recognizes Compasson and immediately leaps out the boat and goes for him. <laughs> He's like, I'll kill you once and for all. Um, they struggle in the water and both go under, but only Magwitch resurfaces. <gasps> he killed a co a No, that was Compasson. Remember the, the other convict slash oh. the guy who fucked over Miss Havisham? Yeah. What's he, why is he up and about? He's a convict too. What was he doing? Um, he didn't get transport. He got a lighter sentence because he was rich. So he didn't get transported, and he's, like, allowed to be in the country, but he also heard Magwitch came into the country, so he was, like, yes. looking out for him and out for revenge, basically. Yeah, sure. Get him caught again. So anyway, Magwitch drowns him. Good. He's put in chains and led away, but Aww. Pip promises to stand by him. Magwitch. He's, like, really loyal to him now. Well, yeah. Yeah. The state appropriates all of Magwitch's money. Oh, no. But Pip's not too bothered by it. What? But that's his money. No. Nah, he didn't want it. Clara and Herb get ready to be married, and Wemmick tricks Pip into being his best man for a quick courthouse wedding to Miss Skin. How did he trick Pip? Into <laughs> He's that? like, come out for breakfast, and they go for a walk, and they're like, what's this? <laughs> and he pulls on like fancy gloves, and they go into like a little church, and Miss Skivens is there, and he's like, what? <laughs> he's just like, Herb, this is nice, but I was genuinely hungry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was um, that was Wemmick. The surprise wedding was Wemmick. Oh yeah. Um, oh. Her- Herb still can't afford to be married quite yet, but he's getting it. Oh. Herb. They're getting ready to be married. Herb offers Pip a job. Hmm. Not that he's got one. <laughs> but Pip asks for some time to think about it. He visits Magwitch in prison. Magwitch is sick and probably won't make it to the noose. 
Oh, that's good. He caught a cold in the ocean, I guess. Well, yeah. Drowning one's enemy tends to do that mm. to one. <laughs> to one. <laughs> On the day of his death, Pip eases his suffering by telling them, by telling him that his child that he believed lost is alive and well and a beautiful lady. But she's cold AF. <laughs> he didn't tell her that. <laughs> he didn't tell him that. She cold fox. Stone cold. <laughs> Stone cold. Um, Magwitch dies in peace. Thank you. After Magwitch's death, Pip falls into a feverish illness. Um, he's arrested for debt. He's nearly carted away to prison. Oh, Pip. Um, but he's spared because of his extreme ill health, which is, like, nice. But not um, nice, because... He has death. some hallucinations where he sees Orlick and Miss Havisham um, and Joe's face. But wait, the last is not a hallucination. It's, it's actually Joe. Joe, and he's nursing Pip back to hell. Oh, Joe! Um, Joe tells him that Miss Havisham is dead yeah. at last, and has divided her fortune among her relatives. And Pip? No. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> what? Bitch, I saved you from catching on fire. <laughs> Orlick is in jail after... I straight up saved your life and you don't give me a penny. <laughs> after robbing Pumblechook. Oh, good. And Biddy has taught Joe to read. And oh. Write. Isn't that nice? Thank you. Pip Biddy. heads... So, after he's better, Pip... Like, I'm going to head back to the marches. I'm going to find Joe and make amends. And I'm going to propose to Biddy. He, but when what? he gets there, Biddy's schoolhouse is empty, and Joe Smithy is empty as well. And when Pip finds them, he's shocked to find out that they're married. Joe and Biddy? Mm-hmm. I ship it. Yeah. Did he just, like, they didn't, like, they're the only people who didn't abandon each other. Did he just, like, expect to come back and be like, Biddy? Yes. It's he's, meaty. He's the worst. <laughs> it's meaty. <laughs> Pippy. So despite his mild disappointment. <laughs> that's where. He expresses happiness for them. Um, and he, you know, he finally decides, okay, I'm going to take the job Herb offered me. Yeah, good. You have no money. Okay. So we cut to 11 years later. Oh, God. Okay. That's um, a time job. <laughs> Pip's returned to England. I think from being on the ship. Ship, I guess. Because that's the job. <laughs> Can't remember. Um, Denmark, he, mayhaps. So <laughs> he says he's learned to work hard and he's content with the modest living he makes um, working for the merchants. Um, he goes to visit Joe and Biddy, and he tries to convince Biddy that he's resigned himself to being a bachelor. But then he goes and takes one last gander at Satis' house. Except that it's no longer standing. Uh, whose house? Satis. Satis' house. Who? That was Miss Havisham's old house. Oh, just say that. Sorry. It's the name of the house. I've been using it the whole time. I thought you picked up on it. It's fine. No, I dropped it. <laughs> In the bog. In a silvery mist. Oh, of course. Is there a Greek god messing with them? <laughs> uh, uh, I do. What was that you said? I steal you away. <laughs> I take you. <laughs> so he's walking through the ruined, sort of overgrown garden, and he's thinking about Estella. He heard that she was unhappy with Drummel, obviously, but apparently Drummel's recently died. Nice. As the moon rises on the garden. <laughs> <laughs> Pip happens upon Estella. Just she's, in the garden? She's just wandering through the same garden. How long has she been wandering there? <laughs> 11 <don't> years? <laughs> um, and they, you know, come together and it's sort of cordial and kind of, you know, nice. And they reflect on the past together fondly. And like, remember how bad shit it was 11 years ago? <laughs> Your adopted mom. What was going on there? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what happened there? Um, remember that time she said, she would like talk to you and said to break their hearts? What did that mean? Remember when she caught on fire? Wow. <laughs> remember she wore her wedding dress every day ever? <laughs> they leave the garden hand in hand and Pip sees no shadow of another parting from her. So it's like implied that they stick together. No shadow what? Of another parting from her. What the fuck does that mean? It means he doesn't think they'll part again. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm. And that is the end of the story. What was the great expectation, Estella? Yeah, I think so. Like his expectations for his own life. I like the I like the one with the ghost and the Christmas more. Because yeah. it's got that little guy going, God bless us, everyone. <laughs> this yeah. One. No one no one was blessing us in this one. No one was. This it was very mysterious. It felt a little Dorian Grayish at points. Yeah, well, I'm the same era, I guess, and it's all like gentlemen being mm, naughty. naughty. <laughs> Naughty, Naughty boys. This week was the creepy one. Oh, this is creepy. Oh, I guess it was creepy. I guess it was like a maybe cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> I find Miss Havisham really creepy. She was pretty creepy when you first meet her and all the clocks. She's so dramatic. She's like, stop <laughs> all the clocks. <laughs> She's like that poem, you know, you know the mm-hmm. W H Auden poem. No, the one that they say in four weddings and a funeral. 
and IT crowd kind of you know, <laughs> no. stop all the clocks. <laughs> you know when someone dies and stop all the clocks. Oh time. right, right, right. You sure. know that. Come on. I know about stopping clocks. I didn't know the poem. Though. That's just the beginning. Yeah. Stop the clocks and I don't know someone dies. Yeah. Stop the clocks. You know what died? She died that day. Mm. She really did. She. she yeah. Was like she was ready corpse. to die. Would it have been just more merciful for her to just kill herself at some point? Like, I don't know. Her? That's not what she wanted. I think she... I what a know. terrible life she lived, though. Just, mm-hmm. like, entombed in her own, like, grief. I don't know. She just never moved past it. Yeah. I guess I didn't really You don't think therapy. she got some kind of sick enjoyment out of it a little bit? What? Fucking up with Estella and stuff? Yeah. Like, getting her revenge on all of mankind. And... Well, did she even get revenge on mankind? Well, kind of. <laughs> in the, in the uh, ad- film adaptation, it's implied that, like, Estella, like kills Drummond. Like he Who's like Drummond again? I know we just did Bandley and Drummond. Thank you. <laughs> Bandley. That's the that's the only way Drummond. I know him. <laughs> um Yeah, it's like it's like implied or something that she like loosened his saddle when he went out riding and he like fell and like died. So yeah, she weaponized mean? this little hot girl. Yeah. Little little baby supermodel. Yeah, she 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 is she's Femme Fatale. Scarlett Johansson. In in everything, in Black Widow. Well, in everything, Scarlett Johansson's ever in. Even in We Bought a Zoo, <laughs> <laughs> they bought a zoo. <laughs> you have to read me a line. I'm protecting this zoo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm buying the zoo. <laughs> I thought it would focus more on Pip as a child. I thought it was very orphan centric, but I guess that's more yeah. all of our twist. Yeah, yeah. This is more like this great journey into manhood. Yeah. So it's like a Bildungsroman, which is a fancy name for like a coming of age story. I know what that means. I used to. I, yeah, Catcher in the Rye was my favorite. Well, maybe the audience doesn't know. Uh, they should. Well, now they do. <laughs> Damn you. To Trialgan mm-hmm. to um, visit my parents. How are they? They're fine. Um, the toilet seat there is so uncomfortable that I was just so relieved to like plop my butt down on the toilet seat here. Did you have you lived with that uncomfortable one your whole life? No, they um, oh. changed it recently to okay. like a soft closer one, but it's it's like I don't know why it's so uncomfortable. It's either. Too small, or my butt is so it like too cuts in. Too? Yeah, it cuts in. It, it oh, hurts. No. It Does hurts. it like cur- curve up or something? I don't think so. I don't know. It's just it's not a comfortable poopy. Man, experience. why haven't you even? Who designs? We gotta write a strongly worded letter to someone. I think.